Drums, please. Do you like books? What about books that read to you? Not the books themselves. That would be interesting if books had voices. It would be like once upon a time. You don't know if the book, what what voices the books would have. Who, who knows? Sometimes the books are read by authors. Sometimes they're read by uh, voice actors. I've mentioned it before. The Martian's one of my favorite because the voice actor is pretty fantastic. Uh, but if you want to go investigate the world of spoken books or weird books with faces, I don't know what I'm talking about. AudibleTrial.com slash dopamine, D-O-P-E-A-M-I-N-E. Get your first ebook for free and then uh, pay monthly to get uh, as many ebooks as you can muster. So go ahead and do that thing. AudibleTrial.com slash D O P E A M I N E. And that supports the channel. So let's get back to the show. Hey, everybody, C Note here, and welcome to Dopamine, the show where everything's made up and the points don't matter. Um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the manic crash. It's sort of what I'm going through right now. It's what I've been going through for, for months, really, um, years at this point. Um, I mean, you could say all my life, but I think I've been more consciously aware of it the past maybe two or three years in regards to the nuances of what it's been feeling like to go through this cyclothymic cycle. So if you're not familiar, if you haven't listened to any other podcast episodes, first of all, I'm going to warn you that this is a little bit more of a heavier episode, but more so in just trying to explain kind of what I'm experiencing. And maybe if you're someone that's experiencing this, uh, perhaps this can be helpful to you. But the main idea being that uh, cyclothymia is a kind of a form of bipolar disorder. It's a mood disorder. And... You can think of it as bipolar three in that it's the mildest form of bipolar disorder, but it's still, still pretty, um, sucky. It's not fun. So mild is like a hard word to use because it doesn't quite encompass, um, you know, what is, what is really happening. And, um, you know, month to month, the past few months I've actually been getting feeling better during mania meaning I've been having greater tools to manage it. And I'll probably talk about that a little bit more in upcoming episodes because when, as soon as I started learning that I was an Enneagram one and started exploring the subtypes and those instinctual sequence energies that are kind of a part of our primal instincts as a human being, um, exploring those, those instinctual aspects of myself compared to you know, what the world asks us to be in terms of a modern civilization being more uh, focused or, you know, unlocking a lot of my own personal um, traumas, to put it a little bit, um, uh, to be reductive. You know, it's probably something a lot more nuanced than just that. But uh, I know trauma has been kind of thrown around a lot lately. But um, a lot of things in my own personal history that are making sense, whether that's because of me or things around me or the way I was raised or the way that things just kind of turned out to be like. Um, so as I've explored a lot of those things, understood my own tendencies and even gotten to know my body and how my brain, even as a physical part of my body is reacting to different aspects of, of my experience. So one of the roots for me has been centered around anger anger has been a really key component for me to understand as to what's activating me. So when I'm in mania, um, you know, typically hypomania, which the, the term is actually hypomania, which again is like a kind of a lower, more milder form of, of mania. When you think of mania in terms of clinically mania is a little bit more of a, um, unconscious state of heightened, uh, heightened action. It's like a, 
uh, an increase in adrenaline. It's this feeling that you can take on anything. Your mind is sort of in a hyperactive state. You're sort of, um, it's like every little thing feels good. And then you're seeking more things to keep that high going. Right. So it's kind of like a high, but not like a chill on weed kind of high, but more of just like a, um, intense, almost like a, um, it's almost a dissociative or how would I describe it? It's kind of a, um, it's an intense joy. And it's strange because you were like, what's wrong with joy? It's like, well, the thing is that the feeling overall is kind of like being on a treadmill. And as you start running, you know, usually someone might look at running as like, a, oh, this is going to be awful. This doesn't feel very good. And I have to like push myself through it. If you're in a manic state and you start running, you're like, this feels great. I can feel everything in my mind and my body. And uh, you know, the treadmill starts going and you start to feel like, oh, I could take more and just start doing more and start putting on more pressure and just increasing the speed. And, uh, you know, mania, hypomania is sort of this like slow incline in that kind of way. You keep pressing the button and before you know it, the button's jammed and you're not even controlling it anymore. The speed of the treadmill is getting ha- faster and faster and faster. And I've described this on other podcast episodes before. Um, the difference as to how I've been managing lately is sort of learning, you know, recognizing that this is something out of my control, that this is something that I sort of rest into and to allow myself to find safer ways of enjoying the pleasures that come from it. So, you know, not doing anything that's going to put me in any kind of physical danger, or even managing, making sure to manage my expectations so that for me personally, I get excited about projects. I get excited about um, future plans or something that I can do, or, or even understanding like the scope of humans. And, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like my brain gets into this place of like, I understand how everything works and um, maybe kind of playing with that. But part of what's been helping me is not getting too attached to that not really getting too attached to anything that happens during mania because, you know, what's essentially happening is, is this feeling of, of certainty in my past. I've I've felt a feeling of certainty. Like I understand how this works or I know the path or I know what I got to do. And then I just start doing it. And without considering how my energy will eventually fade and that I have limits and that the, the, the limits will, um, the, whim- the limits are okay to accept. It's totally valid to t- tell myself that like, hey, like this is a cool idea. Let me write it down somewhere or these are some interesting thoughts or maybe those will make for interesting videos or interesting articles one day. But that's all they are right now. These are just complex ideas that I'm maybe getting too hype about. In a lot of ways, I'm getting high on my own supply. So that feeling, that intense feeling of of feeling heightened and excited and feeling like you can take on the world. It's like you almost feel immortal in a strange sense. It's like, uh, you know, you just feel like you can do anything. You're willing to take risks. You want to try anything. And for me, I I end up spending a lot of money sometimes if I'm not too careful. And um, it can really get me to a place where my inhibitions are lowered. So I say yes to more things, which um, is good for me overall as an Enneagram one. But I am also needing to make sure that those things are not, you know, completely destroying the scaffolding of my life, (laughs) you know, so that's the tricky balance. Um, So as I start to work on some of my own growth as an Enneagram one towards Enneagram seven, so Enneagram one for you to generally understand is more of a sort of a rigid uh, anger is the passion. There's sort of this like push and pull with anger that I experience. And then seven is more of a, um, a a lightened, heightened, consuming sort of personal pleasure kind of state. And so for me, I've seen these connections between like how I am in mania and that desire to fulfill those seven needs. And then how I am typically normally where I'm a little bit more focused and logical and rational and practical in life. 
and how life every day is calling on me to pull on that seven energy a little bit more, pulling on that energy to relax and to play and to just goof off and like waste time. And, and that like, not everything's at stake every moment of every day. So, you know, during that feeling of mania is the easiest for me to feel at bliss in nearly any situation. I can be patient. I can find joy in everything. I can really, um, I, 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 my pleasure seeking energies are turned on and, uh, you know, I, I find those things. The struggle is that once mania is over and I start to crash, then it becomes harder because my brain still wants to keep going. My brain is like, this feels great. Let's do this all the time. Like we should stay this way. We should feel this way constantly. Like it makes sense to be positive. It makes sense to take on, you know, eat all the food we want to eat and go experience the things we want to experience and do whatever we want, whenever we want to. And then my normal brain comes back and everything just kind of drips away. I'm not exactly sure why this happens or, or what is happening with my chemical rhythm as it were, but it does feel rhythmic on a monthly scale, monthly ish, like three to four weeks, very similar, at least now similar to like a menstrual cycle, but it's, hasn't always been that way. Um, the, there have been times where it's been less often, you know, up to three months or so, but lately it's been closer to three to four weeks and, um, it's been a little harder to manage. Um, the crash is always the hardest part and the crash is kind of the window that I'm in right now where I kind of reached a plateau and then, I wake up one morning and just like all of the adrenaline is just gone. You just feel like a shell of a person and all of the excitement and positivity just kind of like floats out of your body. And um, you just need to lay there. That's how I feel. I feel like I've just needed to lay. I haven't been, I would like to more, but I've, I do have work to do. Um, so I'm trying to balance that out and do a little bit of what I need to do and a little bit of what I want to do and um, trying to not push myself. And it really is about listening. Um, I've been really trying to listen more to how I feel, whether that's, you know, if I need to rest to let myself rest, not to try to push myself or get coffee or try to get some caffeine or some sort of push to make my feels, myself feel a certain way because that's not honoring my body to push it to do something that it's not wanting to do. So when I'm feeling this crash, it's in a lot of ways, it's my mind being almost like distraught. It's this morning kind of feeling. I feel this sadness. I feel this intensity. That's just like, where did all this energy go? Where did all this excitement go? My brain was working so efficiently. I was doing so much. I was able to have such clarity and, um, now it's gone. We're kind of foggy and tired and, um, We need to, you know, just feeling this sense of loss. Now I'm trying to get more comfortable with the idea of however I'm feeling. That just is how I'm feeling, right? And associating or dissociating, not becoming non-attached to the idea of judgment around those things, right? Like I'm laying in bed and I feel awful and then making myself feel worse about, you know, the the work that I can't do or that I can't go out and spend time with Molly because I can't really move very well. And, you know, all these stories and narratives that kind of pile up in in the mind. I think if you're, you've experienced mania or this crash before, then maybe you're, um, you know, you kind of understand that feeling, this feeling of, of um, not almost not accepting your dynamism, right? Because like, if you're dealing with bipolar disorder or some sort of, manic movement between mania and dysthymia or depression that it sometimes can be really hard to accept those swings it can be really hard to accept the intensity and then the complete lack of energy afterwards that um, maybe experiences or exists in other people in a much more nuanced state, but the stark contrast in anyone who's dealt with uh, a mental health extreme um, 
I, I think those that that separation, that contrast can be really it's so jarring. It really is. And I say that to empathize. And um, you know, honestly, what it's it's just yeah, that that feeling of like lying in a crater and like steam is coming off your body, like all your energy is just going. It's not that I don't have any energy at all. It's that um because like I'm still here, I'm talking, I'm doing things. Uh, but there's like a particular lack of mental excitement. It's like the crash after a sugar high, though, like times a hundred. I, I don't know how to exactly describe it. Um, what's hard is that no one else can really feel what you're feeling, right? You can only try to communicate it. And that's what I'm doing here is trying to communicate it. And I think that's part of why I'm sharing this too, is that like, maybe I can give you a metaphor to communicate that to other people or to at least you know, maybe send this to someone and, and be able to share what this experience is like, because it can be really hard. I've had difficulties with jobs in the past in explaining this feeling and that like I could have a week where I'm doing just such amazing work and I'm getting so much done and people around you get used to that and uh, they start to get excited about that and they start throwing things your way. But then the crash happens and suddenly everything is overwhelming and everything just piles on top of you. Um, and it's hard to explain that you're not that same person anymore, at least not for this month. Like that was your push and now you need to rest. And it's so hard because I know a lot of people are working jobs where if they were to say that they're dealing with a mental health thing, that they may get fired or to say that I need to take a day off, you know, you may get fired. So it's important that if you have sick days, to like save those up for these moments, right? Obviously when you're sick, take those days off too. But, um, and when you're hired, you know, kind of explain that, that you maybe need like a day or two to recover um, if possible, you know, not every job is going to be accommodating, but at least you can try. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to have a partner who can understand that. I think, um, you know, she's still a human being. She still has her own needs and all of that, that I still need to take care of. But it's, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to just say like, you need to stop. And now's the time. Because when you try to push yourself, I think that's ultimately where like the deepest parts of depression come, at least for me in this situation is when I start to create those judgments on top of judgments on top of judgments. Right. So it's kind of this idea of like, all right, I'm laying in bed and I need to go do work. It's like, pick one, either go do work or lay in bed, you know, stop kind of living in the limbo between those two things. And uh, that's a, in a lot of ways, what I'm working on being consistent with that wherever I am, whatever I'm feeling is where I am and what I'm feeling and that it's not devalued or made different by where I quote unquote should be or should, or how I should feel. Right. And, and there's so many of those shoulds that make having some of these mental health difficulties, um, even harder, you know, and realizing how much we stack that on ourselves, how much that becomes something that's either assumed, you know, assuming how someone else thinks about us or even the actuality, you know, there are actualities of maybe someone is, is disappointed, but, that's their expectation of you. That's not who you actually are. You know, everyone's dealing with our own stories, our own imaginations, and that includes our imaginations and stories about others who are or are not dealing with mental health things. So, you know, what's really hard is that generally right now, even with all of this, you know, particular mania stuff too, I'm kind of dealing with some other big mornings in my life. Um, when it comes to understanding my role as a personality, as an ego, and um, almost mourning a lot of the time I've lost being in my ego so much, and um, you know how much I've missed because of my own particular focus of attention. And so that's a whole other thing. Maybe that's a whole other episode. Um, but you know, those are things that if I'm not careful, just kind of stack 
and they don't need to stack. And it doesn't mean I need to be blindly positive, right? It's just like, be where I am. That's part of the mania, right? Is like, when I'm in that, I'm feeling this intense joy. I'm feeling this clarity and I take advantage of that and I do the best that I can and I make notes. But what I can't do is create the expectation for my future self, which is not going to be the same person as I am now. And that even includes how I feel as a depressed person, you know, in terms of my, my mental state, this is not forever, you know, whether, whether the next stage is, you know, I get hit by a bus or I end up, uh, you know, going back up energy wise and get back to normal, which happens every month. Um, you know, it's just these few days where I got to take a step back and allow myself to do that. And I would encourage you that if you have the opportunity to take a step back as well, to do that, or to at least uh, release the reins of some of your own expectations of yourself. You know, a lot of us are parents. We can't necessarily step away from that duty or tell the kids that we're feeling something, some sort of way. We can talk to them about it. I don't think, I don't see any reason why not. Um, and, um, you know, I think sometimes we, again, piling on those expectations of like, we have to play with the kids a certain way or, or be there in a certain way. Uh, capacity. Whereas if we just kind of take a step back, like it'll be fine for a few days. Um, do the basic things that you can do, do the best that you can, right? No less, no more. Um, you know, I know that's kind of vague and intuitive and esoteric a little bit. I know it's harder. It's easier said than done kind of thing. Um, but uh, I, I always worry about the time that we spend with the kids while I'm feeling a little depressed. Um the kids themselves, like they're fine. The kids are going to have fun. They're going to find ways to do what they do. And the best that I try to do is manage their expectations of me. I try to teach them things when I can to be a little bit more self-sufficient or to explain just like my energy is really low today. We can play this instead of this, instead of telling them to just leave me alone. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I could do this, but I can't really do this right now. Um, and I think that's part of it too, is just like right now, this is how I'm feeling right now. And, uh, I think that's important because that's something that we can teach our kids as well about, you know, no feeling is final. It's this idea of how you're feeling is just how you're feeling. And, um, sometimes there's no way to, or, or there's no way to, or it's maybe not appropriate to quote unquote change how you're feeling, right? Your kids may try to make you smile, which is super cute or, um, you know, write you messages or something and, and I don't know, let it happen. It's okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I think, um, in these moments I'm, I, I, I'm grateful when the kids are around for that reason. I think the kids help me loosen up as an Enneagram one, but then also when I am experiencing, uh, depressive stuff that it's, um, that they are, uh, you know, they're, they're cheering for you more than maybe you think, and maybe putting on too much pressure on yourself could, uh, backfire, right? Just, just let go, ease off the gas pedal and let the car coast for a while, that kind of thing. So, I don't know. I hope that makes some semblance of sense. Um, I think that's the capacity at which I can talk about this today. I've got some work I got to do, but um, I probably need to, I'm going to go rest. I'm going to go lay down and then I'll come back and see if I have more, more energy, right. Um, to, to do some work. That's the balance too. I work from home, so I have to be a little bit more self-motivated <laughs> whenever possible. Um, so that's it. This was a little bit more of a, kind of lower energy episode, but I am hoping that, you know, someone can find this episode on a Google search or something about, um, the manic crash and what that feels like and maybe how to start a little bit getting out of it. Um, because it's not something you're going to force. It's really just kind of time based. And, um, I think the best thing that you can do is, is just have some acceptance and a little bit of non-attachment to the idea that like, this is no one, nothing's out to get you. Nothing's trying to ruin your life. This is just how you feel. Um, and you know, let your body trust your body and trust, you know, let everything run its course. 
Um, but take care of yourself, drink some water, drink some vitamins, um, you know, eat healthier food. And, um, that's the best that you can do. So just do the best you can ultimately is what the thing is. So with all that said, um, we have a couple of different, we have, everything's getting consolidated into one website. If you want to support, well, really two websites, but if you want to support us financially here on the channel or on the, the podcast, you can go to dopamine, uh, uh, patreon.com slash dopamine D O P E A M I N E. You can leave some financial support there and join the community there. And then also, uh, we have a website with courses, personality related courses at dopeintp.com setting up another URL. Everything is getting transferred to teachable. So it's getting consolidated and, uh, that should hopefully be a little easier to follow. But I'm making sure every URL that I've said so far goes to the same place because it's getting a little confusing. But, um, you know, like, subscribe, leave a rating and review on iTunes and all that fun stuff. I also have a book for INTPs called Common Questions and Uncommon Answers. You can find it on Amazon or you can sign up for our email list at our website, dopeintp.com, and get a free copy of the book um, if you're an INTP. All of that said, um, if you're dealing with depression and you're dealing with the crash, um, the best that you can do, I feel, is to honor yourself. Find a way to not treat this as a normal thing or try to push yourself, push yourself to pretend like it's normal because it's not. And that's okay. It doesn't make you less than. It's just different. It's just an energy that you have to accommodate. And uh, accommodating that energy is going to help you heal. It's going to help you regain some of that energy. You know, your body was burning a lot of energy and now it needs to rest and regain some of that energy. So just let that process happen um, and, uh, you know, breathe through it, eat some food. I know your mind might be fighting against you, but let your mind work for you. You're, you are your mind and your body, you know, have a conversation with yourself and say, Hey, no, we're, we're going to just relax. It's fine. Everything's okay. Everything will exist without me for a little while. I can, it can deal. It'll, it'll be fine. And then, you know, and then just let it ride its course. So if you have questions, you can reach me at let's go see notes on all the social channels. And we have a voice message uh, system here with anchor anchor.fm slash dopamine, the links in the description, all that fun stuff. So with all that said, I'm going to go lay in my crater <laughs> and uh, let the steam rise off. So I love you. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll catch you next time on dopamine. See ya. Just a quick reminder that we have a Patreon at patreon.com slash dopamine, D-O-P-E-A-M-I-N-E. That's a place where you can support the channel financially and join our community to be able to connect with others who are trying to grow in their personal health, personal growth journey and support dopamine through whatever financial means necessary. So it could be a small donation, big donation, whatever feels comfortable over at patreon.com slash dopamine. This has been a C-Note Media Production.